Another episode from Key Points brought to you from Cisco Live Amsterdam 2024. In this one, we're going to be talking about the CCIE importance and some of the most controversial rumors around this certificate and around the exam, the lab exam itself. We're going to be talking with Yusuf Baiji, the certification, the Cisco certification program manager, and he's going to answer all of your questions. So without further ado, let's go. Well, hello, everyone. This is Ahmed Mofta again, and another episode from Keypoint. I'm here with the Cisco certifications director himself, Yusuf Baiji, and uh, I'm just going to ask him some questions rela related to the certification, and mainly CCIE, because, hey, this is something which is very, very crucial and trending and essential for everyone in the networking industry. So, hey, Yusuf, welcome. Welcome to the show. I'm really glad to have you with us here today. Thank you for having me and enjoying Cisco Live over here right now. I mean, there is a lot of... Uh Pasha, a lot of uh, learning and uh, too much uh, happening over here. Well, a pleasure always meeting you and uh, this is live here from Cisco Live Amsterdam 2024. Guys, make sure to tune into Cisco YouTube channel to just watch lots of the what's going on here in the session. But back to my point, Yusuf. Uh, CCIE, do you feel that this certificate is still holding its value? Because I get this question, this is not my personal question, I get it from everyone around the world. Do you feel that this certificate is still holding its value? Since we have around about 70,000 CCIE, give or take, uh, certified engineers around the globe, the people feel that this is becoming trendy and it's, it doesn't have value. Is this true? So, Ahmed, I mean, honestly, I get the same question. And let me put it from a different perspective, right? Why are you pursuing CCIE is the first question, right? Are you just doing it because everyone else is doing it? Are you doing it for getting a new job? Are you doing it for self-satisfaction? So when I started my journey, the, the main reason that I did it was not for the job, it was the challenge. It was like that pinnacle thing, like that creme de la creme, the best of the best, the gurus, the most respected people in the industry. It was that title, like, you know, that expertise. And it was an endorsement, a validation of my expertise, that if I had a CCA badge, people would know immediately that this guy knows his stuff. Exactly. Right? So the main reason, the question to ask is, why are you doing it? Now, if you're doing it for me, and for many others that I know, they are doing it for the self-challenge, the, the expertise, the validation, the wisdom they have. So yes, there are other benefits. You get good job, you get promotion, you get uh, career progression, you get kind of, you know, different job opportunities. That's always the case. But I think more importantly, CCIE, the people that have been around for the last two, three decades will confirm and validate that they have done this for the challenge, for the expertise, the validation and the experience they have. Because one thing also in, in a different way, if you had asked me, what is the CCA certification measure? Okay. Yep. Right? For, for us, when we are designing the program, we are uh, validating experience. We are not validating your knowledge of the protocol. Like, yeah, I mean, then how is it different from CCNP and CCIE, right? Yeah, exactly. So when I explain this from a different perspective, associate level, professional level, expert level, as you go up in the, in the complexity, if we are asking the same protocol, OSPF, BGP, or SD-WAN, but it gets more complex and complex, and CCIE is more about the experience. So if you have industry experience, you have been in the job, you have done a lot of uh, customer solutions, you have designed the networks, you have deployed many networks, it's that experience that we are trying to verify and validate. Because the protocol knowledge we can verify in the CCNP level or the CCNA level, right. but it's that how you put together the complex network, because it's the end-to-end -end story. Because in CCNP you go kind of uh, individual level like protocols but in CCA you go interconnected all the network together so we, we could say that the CCA is actually a way to give credibility for the years of hard work and experience that you have spent in the networking industry absolutely well said Ahmed. I mean that is exactly how we see it it's that credibility that endorsement that very uh, that rubber stamp 
of your knowledge and wisdom that this guy knows his stuff. Gotcha. Thank you, Yusuf. And uh, I am also thinking about other questions which are very common between all the CCIE candidates that try to give their CCIE lab exam. We, we have lots of myths. We've heard Rumor rumors. Myth. Ah, yeah. We've heard rumors about many things that happen behind the scenes uh, that will make it impossible for a candidate to pass. Which is, for example, I recall, and personally, when I did my first CCIE, like everyone used to scare me. Oh, the proctor is gonna try changing some configuration that you did behind the scenes during the break, uh, maybe as an attempt to, to fail you or to challenge you more. Uh, is this really true or is it a myth? I mean, Ahmed, come on. I, I, I'll say this out loud. I like, just want to make sure that this is it's clear. It's a myth. It's definitely not true. There is, I mean, even I, when I used to be a proctor myself, I had customers open a kiss after they failed, like, oh, Yusuf failed me because he was biased. I said something to him, he didn't like it, so he dinged me and he failed me. That, that's not true. Why would you do it? What's in it for me to do that, right? I mean, the whole point is that when what you're doing in, a, in the eight hours, first of all, the most important thing, the person that is proctoring you in the eight hour is not the person going to grade you. Oh, that's very important. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's not very the, important. that's, because this person, like if you if you came to the exam, I started seven o'clock in the morning, uh -huh. by 5 p.m., I have to go home. You're done. I have my kids, I you know, I have my life. So there will be someone else There is someone. Over. There is someone else on the other side, my peer in another part of the region, that person will be grading you. And when I come in the morning, I am grading, marking someone else's exam from yesterday. So That's it's like trick. follow the sun model. Why There is no biasness in this. It's very independent of what you do and the reflection of what you have configured during the day. Gotcha. See guys, that, that's what I was thinking about. Like Because people might just say, oh, that's the proctor. He has something against me or, so, or, or, or like maybe they have a grudge against me or uh, he's going to fail me. No, it's not the same guy. Is that true? Exactly. It's not the same guy. And think about it. In one lab, there are 10 candidates, right. give or take. You think I'm going to stay back after a long eight hours, another nine, 10 hours to mark 10 more candidates? It's not practical, impossible. it's impossible. So there are different ways to do the grading. We also use scripts oh, and automation. Yeah. Speaking of grading, ah, thank you for reminding me about this. Uh, automation and scripting to grade the, uh, the score of the candidate. Uh, is it like automated? Is it manual or is it both? And when will it be the manual? Pro like, is it like when the proctor, the proctor is going to manually grade? Or is it the script or is it both? How does it work? Yeah, so I mean, grading is definitely both. It's a hybrid method. So if you think about it, when a candidate is configuring eight hours of exam, we don't do step-by-step -step manual verification. Obviously, it's a, it's an age of automation and the programmability. So we are using all the technologies to do automation for grading. But at the end of the day, it's the human proctor who's going to validate or revalidate, I should say, all the automation. So the automation, the whole purpose is to kind of, you know, remove the repetitiveness and kind of all the... Speed, with the fry, Get the get speed the, and all the kind of, you know, quickly there get are things done. Many candidates exactly. single day. And then once the automation script is finished, the human proctor will go in and check everything. Uh -huh. Everything. Uh -huh. okay. Now, obviously, the They're proctor has a lot of experience. There, there is a possibility script may have gone wrong or gone right, whatever. The proctor has experience. He's doing this day in, day out. So the proctor will know if there is any issue and they will overwrite it. Like if there is a, a need be, they will overwrite yeah, it. Yeah. And then the scoring is submitted by the proctor. It's not automated, it's he manual. It. There is a button where a ah. proctor will hit submit and the pass fail results will be shared. So, so it's not like uh, they're left on their own with the script and the script is just going to grade them. No, the proctor no. is going to press something to send the result to Absolutely. that candidate. Uh, you said something right here, uh, Yusuf, about uh, the time for uh, the result, which varies, by the way, because uh, some people might just get the result after like few hours of taking the exam and some others might just wait, might have to wait for a day or a couple of days. Uh, how does it really work like, and why? 
Yeah, so it's a roster schedule in our team. So we have proctors around the world, right? We have proctors like in Dubai, in Brussels, in Beijing, in uh, Brazil, in US, in Australia, in Japan, everywhere. So we have a roster schedule. So let's take a hypothetical example. If you did the lab in Dubai, okay. and 5 p.m. you finish the exam and you go home and I go home, and now the roster coincidentally was the proctor in Brussels. Now the Brussels guy is only two or three hours behind. So obviously he will immediately step in and start running the script and kind of, you know, doing the validation and hit submit. So maybe by the time you reach home, the results yeah, has lucky. come. Yep. But in, in the roster, if there was a proctor in the US, obviously he's still sleeping. When he wakes up in the morning, he's doing his normal day start. And by the time 9 a.m., 10 a.m., he'll get into it and then he will look at the score so it all depends who's the roster who's the who's the person on the schedule to mark your exam well, well, well it just makes sense now and i'm really glad that i met you here today because that cleared lots of questions which are actually now i think used to be myths and now they're very clear that yeah. this is there's a specific process and there is no way that you cannot pass the ccie because of any kind of myth that you might have with yusuf I would like to thank you so much for being here with us and uh, until next time. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Enjoy this is Pleasure. Guys, don't forget. Take care. Bye. Watch and learn.